And we are back with more I hope you really like hammers because that's what we're going to be dealing with here. These two dream bags are really easy to get, but now you have to dig around with these things. Specifically, you have to readjust these hammers so that you can freeze the noggle at the bottom and then kick the ice block up top to it. And you have to make sure these are arranged in sequence, otherwise they're just going to run to those arrows, the block is going to break, and you're going to have to do everything all over again. This is how you get the one up, <clears throat> is by aiming for the hammer on the right. Now the only problem with this is we have to reset everything. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that we can go into the hammer on the uh, left. Now as you see, I set the hammer wrong. So, you have to reset all of these. Move this hammer to the right. I'm gonna wait, cause yeah, there it goes. Yeah. Yeah, the enemy hit detection won't actually count until they're like entirely on the same square as you, so you can use that to maneuver around some tight spaces sometimes. <clears throat> now for this next level, really all you do is move. And you can freeze something, but you don't have to. Because for this level we are entirely stuck on these pink tiles, and that bird is going to kick those ice blocks to get them moving across these springs, and this just becomes a matter of timing. Now you do want to move fast, because that spiky thing uh, being held back by the ice block, if you take too long, the ice block will melt, and that will get into uh, the path you're walking on, and there's no way to avoid it. So what you can do is, if you see it thawing and you're at the top section, you uh, have just enough range to be able to freeze the ice block so that it doesn't get loose. Ah, another hammer puzzle. Hope you like these. Alright, grab the one dream bag. This one's fairly simple compared to the other one. Just that there's one particular thing you have to do to be able to get both dream bags that sort of complicates things. Alright, that's how you get the first one. We're gonna have to do the exact same thing. Except... Let me get this hammer set first. Oh, wait. I still have to reset that one. Here we go. Now we gotta kick it down. Now move quickly to the side. That way we can kick it the other way and grab the final dream bag. Pretty simple compared to the last puzzle, I think. Ah, this puzzle. Remember the bombs? They're back with a vengeance. First thing you want to do is realize that you uh, are only harmed by the initial explosion. If you walk in after the explosion happens, uh, just when it says boom and it's flashing, you're probably not going to get hurt. Now, you see how that thing appeared at the bottom? That ring toadstool looking thing? Grab it, because that leads you here, to a bonus stage. And there's really not much to this. There is a time limit on this, although you can't actually see it. And you're basically just going to be able to run around and collect as many of these ice things as you possibly can until the level eventually crumbles and you'll move on to the next stage. Each of these is worth like 400 points. But since you really can't get extra lives from a high score, or if you can, the score is too high to be able to like, theoretically reach it uh, without, like, playing through the entire game at once. Uh, there's really not much point to it. Ah, this level. You're once again entirely reliant on those birds being able to kick ice blocks around. You're gonna freeze this guy, but what you have to do is move in, take the ice pop, and put a cylinder here. Now you're gonna kick this up top so that that other bird can kick it uh, off to the side. But you notice there's another fudge pop here. That's a sign that we should take it and put this here. Oh, it's thawing. Alright, let's move on. Kick this up. Move that to the side. Oh, you son of a bitch! Yeah, he will do that sometimes. 
It's quite annoying. But he's moved on to the other side of the stage, which will actually make this a little easier, because now we can do it ourselves. Now we're going to kick this back down to that same bird. And then he is going to kick it over to the side to his partner, who is going to kick it into that gap, and we can move across and grab the dream bags. And I'm just freezing that guy for the trouble he caused me. Now, I want you to think back and remember that puzzle where we had to kick the ice block around with the hammer while that turtle guy was after us. And yes, I did die on this once. You're about, you're about to see why. You have to basically do the same thing with springs here, except there's a cannon launching bombs at you as you do this. Uh, that was rather fortunate. And we have to just keep kicking this into the adjacent springs. Ugh. And hope that the cannon doesn't blow up the ice block. Or us. Alright, it's in position. Now I just gotta kick it. Oh god. No, 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 no. Whew. Ah, oh, that was close. Moving on. Oh. Why must you do this to me, Cakeland? I just had Dairy Queen. Okay. Final stage. Before the boss, at least. This is kind of a pain, but not really. Compared to what we've gone to before, this should be, not to make a pun or anything, but a cakewalk. We can just kick this up into the hammer once it's set into position, and that is going to knock it off to the side and into that first dream bag and free this turtle bastard. Now the turtle's going to respawn down here, and we've got to just make sure that we don't line it up with the ice block. Because that'll create more problems than it'll solve. Now you see those springs on either side. Now, what you can do, instead of like having to reset the hammer and do a bunch of bizarre stuff, just do the same thing you usually would. Except, once the block goes up and hits the hammer the first time, you have to move in, knock the hammer away, and then move in from here. Alright. Now. Something about this sequence coming up. After, of course, we hear more talking food. Now, she's telling us that a crystal ball seal is breaking and the palace is going to show up. Now, I should warn you, if you get seizures relatively easily, you should not look at the screen for this part. Because the crystal ball is going to surface from the water, and there's going to be, like, a couple lightning strikes, a couple flashes, then there's going to be a bunch of multicolored balls flashing at the screen while there's a white strobing effect going over a black background. Now this actually doesn't look as bad, uh, just watching the playback of it, as it does when you're actually playing it off the cartridge. It's much brighter if you're viewing it straight from the source material. I mean, even if you're not really prone to seizures from flashing lights, it's still kind of hard to look at. Anyway. We move on to this boss, uh, Kapan, I think that is. It's hard for me to tell, like, the N's and the M's sometimes. This boss is actually relatively simple. He does change up his attacks, uh, on top of doing, like, the usual thing here. That is the main thing he will do, is bounce around the room by spinning in his shell. But the thing that makes this boss fight easy is, you can damage him while he's doing that. Unlike the last boss, where he was airborne and you couldn't hit him at all, this boss, you can basically hit him at any point. Now there is a catch to that. As you start hitting him more, he is going to bounce around the room more than he did before. But as you can see, it's possible to stop that by hitting him a second time once he starts to do this spin attack after your initial contact. So... This boss was really pretty simple. I pretty much argue that the previous boss was harder than this one. But now, we have to move on to the final land after we rescue Princess, uh, Crema? Princess Cream, whatever. And she tells you, and that's a lovely translation error. But, when we come back next time, we will journey to Toyland. I hate this place so much.